Okay, so um, we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and click on that practice, okay? And notice there's an attachment, all right? So if you've never done Google Docs where you've started with a starter document, this is how you do this, all right? So go ahead and click on it. And if you try to do this, without being logged into your school email with the Hemet USD email address, you will not have access to things that I put up. Okay, so you have to use your school email. All right, so notice how all these little guys started popping up here, so I know we're all on the same document right now, because all of you people are there. All right, you do not get to type onto that one. I think it says it's a view only, right? So you have to make a copy of it for yourself. So the way we do that is we hit File, Make a Copy. All right, and you're gonna pro and it will save it to your Google Drive, and then go ahead and click it out, click OK, and probably what I would do is I would come up here and rename it. I might get rid of copy of if you want to put your name on it, that would be great. I'm gonna put period one because that's the name of the class I'm doing right now. Oh, I did some great job capitalizing, didn't I? All right, my caps lock is on. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is when you're doing your performance task, you can use one of the problems we've done as a model. All right, that's fine. Um, but you have to come up with your own unique scenario and your scenario should not be like anybody else's. All right, you should not be sharing your Google Doc with anybody else, because guess what? Mrs. Ballard can see who you've shared it with, okay? So I can get in there and um, actually see the sharing and the history and the viewing history and all of that, okay? So the only person that you should be sharing your Google Doc with is Mrs. Ballard until I tell you otherwise, okay? So um, so if I'm reading scenarios that are the same, if, I'm, if I look at your history and I see that you've been sharing, I'm gonna assume that you cheated, okay? Or that you're trying to use somebody else's work, okay? Because sharing your work is just as bad as someone taking your work. Okay, so um, Jill finished writing a research paper. So this is the problem we had last night. She's hired a friend. Sorry. Okay, she has hired a friend to professionally type the paper for her. The friend charges $4 per page if the page uses only black ink and $7 per page if colored ink appears on the page. Jill knows there will be at most 40 pages with only black ink. There will be no more than 20 pages with colored ink. The paper will be 50 pages or less. What is the greatest possible cost to have the paper typed? So what are the two variables that we saw in there? Uh, ink. Ink, what, well, what, what about the ink? Black and color. Black and color, so I'm gonna call my X black, so you're gonna type this in. We're all practicing this skill right now, okay? And color. And in theory, you did this problem last night, right? Let me see if I can get, I don't know if I can get my view bigger. Let me view it bigger. You editing show ruler full screen. No, that didn't really help. All right. Sorry, I couldn't get it any bigger. Couldn't figure it out. All right. Dismiss. Now I want out of that full screen mode. I wonder if I can escape out of it. There we go. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is write the inequalities. Okay. So I'm gonna show you how to use the equation editor in here. I know we've played with it a little bit in some of the other things we've done, but every equation editor is a little bit different. Um, so, let me see, is it under, no, it's not under more. All right, so let's go up to maybe insert, oh, there it is, equation. And we don't have to do any fractions in this particular other one, but if you wanted to add fractions, this is how you would do it, okay? Oh, my equation did not insert in the right place, did it? All right, so right, make sure you're clicked under write the inequalities, and then we're gonna insert, oops, I don't wanna tab. I wanna insert my equation right there. So I've gotta write, I'm gonna write three inequalities actually, okay? So I'm gonna insert my equation. So it said, and you get a little box. So it says something about, let's talk about the black pages, the X's, okay? Um, so how many, what's the minimum number of black pages you would have? That's the, the 40 is the max, isn't it? Yeah. What's the least amount she could have? Zero, all right? So we're gonna write zero, and then we're gonna write, I don't know if I do, 
less than or equal to. No, it doesn't pop up like that. All right, I think come up here and you'll see you have your little, that little button right there does the less than or equal to. That's why we're using the equation editor. And then I'm gonna do less than or equal to again, because that makes the little sandwich, right? The compound inequality. And then we said it was at most 40 pages. So we're practicing with the equation. And then I, I clicked out of it. See how I'm in the box? I clicked out of it and made some spaces so that we can do another set of inequalities. Okay. So my next set of inequalities, I'm going to hit the equation again. So I'm going to go insert equation. And we got to talk about the color paper, right? The color ink paper. Um, so what is um, the least amount of pages I can have that are colored ink? Zero. Zero. Okay, and we're going to use our less than or equal to symbol again. And I'm going to put in Y for the colored paper, or the colored ink paper. And less than or equal to, and what's the most amount of pages we can have? 20. Perfect. Okay. Now that just gets us horizontal and vertical lines. That really doesn't get us enough to have all of the, um, all of the, prob all of the um, lines we need there. Okay. So. It says that in there that there will be, there's something else about the number of pages. So how many pages will, is it going to be total? 50, 50 or less. less. So how, I, I, know I would add the number of black ink pages to the number of colored ink pages, and then I write less than or equal to 50. So let's do one more equation. So insert equation. We do x plus y, and go to my less than or equal to little symbol up here. And we would say 50. And again, I apologize, mine is so tiny. So, oh wait, maybe I can do this. Look at there, I found the zoom. Oh, much better. Yeah, now I can see it. <laughs> I couldn't see it. All right. Um, and again, up here with the equation, if you notice, there's some, there's where your pi symbol is. There's a division sign, a plus minus sign. Here's where your fraction is. See, that's your fraction. There's a radical in case you ever needed that, okay? But typically in most equation editors, if you kind of explore a little bit, you'll find all the stuff that you need, okay? All right, the next thing we need to do is graph the inequalities. Unfortunately, Google Docs does not graph, okay? So we're gonna use our online graphing calculator, which was Desmos, okay? So if you come back over here, to your go to the tab with power school and if you click on I have you I have a link to Desmos for you okay and if it doesn't come right up with the graph go ahead and hit start graphing that's fine all right we're gonna see just how nice Desmos is for this compared to your um, what you call it your calc your your graphing calculators okay so it's gonna do all the shading for us it's gonna look a little insane but we're gonna we're gonna go with it Okay, so first thing I need to do is, you know, remember the compound inequalities? We have to graph these two, the compound ones separately, okay? So I have to graph a x greater than or equal to zero and an x less than or equal to 40, okay? So I'm gonna do those two. So all you do to type into Desmos is x less than, and you type an equal to sign. See how that made it equal to underneath? Or you can grab it from down here, okay? So x less than or equal to, we said 40 was one of them. Oh, I can't see that on there, can I? It just made the whole thing red. All right, so let's let's come over here to our settings real quick and change our settings on our graph. So that's good. This is how we're going to change our x and our y axis. I don't need to see much of the negative, do I? I'm going to take it down to negative 5 and negative 5 for the x and the y axis. I want to see a little bit of it because then I can actually see all the parts of the quadrant, but I don't need to see all of it. All right, we know that it's going to be... I don't know, at least 50. Let's try putting 50 and 50 for the other two so I can see everything. So that's kind of the biggest number we were working with, right? We might have to play with it a little bit. See how it shifted your graph? Yeah. So if you ever, sh if the graph ever shifts and you need to move it, that's where you change it is up here in settings, okay? I did negative five to 50 on both of them. All right, then we also needed to do X greater than or equal to zero. So greater than or equal to zero. And notice it shaded it again. It's gonna look a little crazy with the shading here. But you see, the, your graphing calculator takes a little bit more effort to get the shading in there than this does. All right, what were our Y values? 
Y has to be greater than or equal to what? Look at the equations we typed. Flip back there and look at the equations we typed. 20. It's, is it greater than 20 or less than 20? Less than 20, less than 20 but greater than? Zero. zero. So I was doing my zero first. So Y is greater than or equal to zero. All right. And notice, on the graphing calculator, we couldn't have done the x equals once. All right? We can only do that in Desmos. All right, and then y is less than or equal to, we said, 20. All right, so we're starting to create a region. I'm starting to see a region right in here. OK? We, and the reason we had to put the, the, the axes in there is so we got our vertices. OK, and then our last one was, oh boy, we have to actually, um, I don't know, let's try x plus y less than or equal to 50. Let's see if it'll graph that. Oh, look at that. I didn't even need to solve it, did I? That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Could I have solved it if I wanted to? Absolutely. Okay. Now, check this out. This is how we're going to go ahead and remember how we labeled them. See how that all five of them are kind of creating this shape right in here? I know it's tough to see, but we're going to grab the vertices on it looks like it's kind of a it's not it's like a pentagon isn't it think about it we had five equations we should probably have five vertices where they cross okay so that's what you need to take the screenshot of we, and basically all you need the shot of is this piece down here with the little points um, highlighted like that labeled okay so I'm going to let you guys go ahead and take your screenshot. I did mine. I just hit a button. So pra you practiced your screenshot earlier. And then we need to paste that into the chart on the Google Doc. Okay. Hopefully you figured out how to screenshot. And if you didn't, ask your neighbor. Oh, boy. Mine's gigantic. Okay. I think we can... Get it, and then get it to fit in there so it doesn't look obnoxious. If you can crop, if it, does anybody figure out how to crop? Yeah. Oh, look, there's a crop button. Nice. Everybody find the, the crop buttons right there. Where? Right here. Once you get it in there, there's a crop image. All right, because I really only need, so if you do this whole, the whole screen screenshot, you can crop the image down. Because we only really need the graph, right? We don't need all the other junk on the internet. All right, that looked pretty good. All right, I'll give you about another minute to get that inserted in. At least it's colorful. Download at the bottom right hand corner and it says copy the clipboard. Is it the number one? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and then copy the clipboard. And then click on the internet and control to do. No, we'll have to fight again. Okay, so when we're done with this, we'll fight with it again. Did it come? Okay, awesome. All right. Thank you, Abraham. I don't use a Chromebook, so. <laughs> I don't know.
All right, now the next thing we got to do is type the vertices. That's not that hard. We're going to read them right off of there, right? Except that Mrs. Bauer can't see them, so I'm going to have to blow it up again. Okay, so let's see. And that we don't necessarily need the equation editor for, right? We could just do zero, zero. So you're going to make your list of vertices. Zero, 20. Uh, let's see, 30, 20. Um, 40, 10 and 40 zero how much nicer is it to be able to graph it on the calculator and it does that work for you than trying to graph that by hand okay so on the on the we're, the, the performance task is going to assess whether you can do linear programming we're not going to put that in or make you do the graphing by hand on the actual test okay so we're gonna we're gonna test that on this piece all right, now we have to write the function to be maximized or minimized, okay? So this was what we called our p function. I know this isn't a p anymore, but we did this thing, right? And I'm not gonna use my equation editor. We don't need it, because we're not doing anything funky to it. Um, so if I went back and I looked at the problem, we're so, and I looked at the question that it's asking, it's asking us um, what is the greatest possible cost to have the paper type? So I probably better look for money, right? So $4 for black and how much for colored ink? Seven. seven. So I need would do 4x plus 7y. Does that sound about right? So 4x plus 7y. And then you're going to basically show your steps of how you plugged into the function. So now step six would be p of 0, 0 equals, and I'd probably want to see 4 times 0 plus seven times zero equals zero, right? All right, and then I'm gonna do P, and it's okay if it shifts down a page, I'm not worried about the formatting of it, okay? The next one was what, zero 20? So we do four times zero plus seven times 20. Anybody get an answer for that one? 140, okay. And then P of 30, 20. So that would be four times 30, 30 plus seven times 20. And what do we get for that one? Do you agree with 260? 120 plus 140. Yeah, I have the wrong number then from last year. I have 280 in there for some reason. All right, P of 40 comma 10, right? Equals four times 40 plus seven times 10 equals 230. I like that one. Okay, and then the last one is P of 40, 0 equals 4 times 40 plus 7 times 0. So basically, you're showing me your work in there. We're just typing it up. So what do we end up with for that one? 160. All right, this was Jennifer, right? No, Jill. What's Jill's best possible outcome for the, what did we want to have the greatest possible cost? So how much is the greatest possible cost for her? $260 to print the paper. Okay. So we would want to type that out. So the greatest, greatest possible cost for having the paper typed is $260, and I also wrote this since it's kind of concluding it, this would include 30 pages of black ink and 20 pages of color ink. All right, I can, I'll put a run turn after this so you guys can see the whole thing at once. Uh, 
Okay. I'm going to give you about another minute to get that done, and then I'm going to show you. We're going to practice turning it in. Okay. You're not going to just randomly share it with me because I don't need 60 of these in my inbox. Okay. There is a way to turn it in where I don't have to get 60 of them in my inbox. Okay. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to turn it in. So I'm going to go back here to Haiku. And I'm going to click on this thing right here. Oh, that's not the button I wanted to click on. You guys don't have that button. Please. All right, so you're going to click uh, on here. And you're going to hit go to Dropbox. Or does it tell? Or does it say turn it in on yours? It says go to Dropbox. Go to Dropbox. Okay, so we're going to hit go to Dropbox. And that does not what yours looks like, is it? Hand in, that's what I want you to do. I can't show you because I'm not a student. Okay, I'm a teacher. I can tell you, I can show you if you got it in or not, but I can't. So everybody's gonna hit the go to Dropbox and hand in. Okay, yours says hand in in that area right there. And then, so you, then when you do that, you're going to, uh, let me see if I can actually hit it as a student. So let me do that. All right, it appears you have some unpublished duties below or not. Okay, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna go here, go to Dropbox. Does it let me say hand in? No. no it was oh, right there. Okay, so it says hand in, and we're gonna hand in the practice.